For Criminal Media's Polity, I'm Tabi Shomulikai. Joining me today is Professor Raymond Sadna, here to unpack his column titled Assessing and Engaging with the GNU After 100 Days, Prospects for Democratic Resurgence, Part 2. Welcome, Raymond. Thank you. You argue that in reality, one has two possibilities. A, a unified GNU that basically tries to rule more efficiently and effectively, mainly on non-ideological questions, or a GNU that attempts to address questions in the statement of intent, which are liberatory, and this is almost certain to split the GNU and possibly to end its existence. So can you explain this to us? Well, this relates to my previous question. If you look at the way in which some of the ministers have reported on their job, it's fairly technocratic that they get on with the work and they can speed up this and that and can digitize, in the case of Schreiber, you can digitize a lot of home affairs things, try to create home affairs at home. That is that no one need go into an office. And what I'm not going into the merits of that and the fact that a lot of people don't have access to the internet. You could do that, assess things technically and say, look, um, Minister Schreiber, this, that, and the other, or in relation to other people's portfolios, you can talk about workability and how it doesn't reach people and this, that, and the other. On the other hand, you could have a debate on a number of elements of the statement of intent, which I referred to in the previous question. And if you get people uh, having a debate on uh, uh, removing spatial inequality, uh, desegregating schools, and all these sorts of things, it's going to create a split in the GNU. Now, it may be that the ANC and the DA would do everything they could to avoid splitting it, and it depends on both of those parties, especially the DA, whether it would split. But what I've been saying in those articles is that the GNU is basically a depoliticized uh, institution. It doesn't have debates. Uh, it's in the public eye, but doesn't reveal debates in the public eye. It, its debates are usually about crises, and they retreat into uh, privacy, into confidentiality, and they sort it out as best they can. So mainly it's between the ANC and the DA. Now, there comes a point where something, and they don't want to reach that point, where something cannot be resolved between them. So they don't want to get it there by talking about those things. And that keeps the GNU depoliticized, in my opinion, although they have undertaken things which may have gone beyond how it would have been phrased by any of the parties. And this is because uh, people let some things pass because they can see the greater good of the GNU holding, creating stability in the country. Or alternatively, in the case of small parties, they don't want to even squeak because they think they're so lucky to have become cabinet minister with all the perks and the huge salary, and they rather will keep quiet. So there are a number of reasons for keeping quiet, but the main ones that I'm concerned about are the DA and the ANC. And please, can you tell us something about the national dialogue and what you call the popular forces? Also, why do we hear so little about these from the GNU? Well, these are mainly questions that you should be putting to the government. But I wrote about this, and what I said is that uh, there is no um, doubt that if it were possible to have a national dialogue, which was a real dialogue and really national, it would be a good thing. However, my impression is that 
what they're speaking about, what they were speaking about when they motivated for it, was neither a national dialogue covering the whole country. Uh, some people speak about the Congress of the People campaign for the Freedom Charter. Now, that at that stage, the country was much smaller, much fewer people, but people went right around the country uh, from door to door eliciting demands, and these demands formed the basis for the Freedom Charter. Now, the way they talk about it, they've not... They've not given any indication of preparation. They've given no indication of who will be involved. Everyone or just a small pe a group of people, how does that small group of people become national? How do they represent people? Who chooses them? Finally, they speak about ending up with a um, social compact. Now, what is the social compact? What is the value of the social compact? Who will have to agree to it? They've said nothing. I don't know if they've done anything. It's as if they've forgotten about it. And it doesn't make people take it seriously if you don't talk about it and give them the opportunity to prepare. In my view, uh, if you want something like that, you must be talking to people on the ground. And the, that concept of working on the ground as well as in public seems to be foreign to the current uh, leadership. And lastly, Raymond, you say that all the liberation heroes and heroines would have not been passive in relation to the statement of intent. What would they have done? Uh, there's an article by Walter Sassoon in a book on uh, it was of things written in prison, edited by Mac Maharaj. And he criticized people who said no one must get involved in the Bantustans, in those governments, so-called governments. And he said, MK is not there. What are they supposed to do? And what was pragmatic about leaders like Mandela and Sisulu? And some of those statements about the Bantustans are, were controversial then and when they came out. And what they really were saying is that even though we condemn the Bantustans, you've got to ask yourself, how do people exercise their pol political activities? And they do so by engaging with the institutions, just as if you are, have a particular point of view which makes you think that the GNU is sullied, you don't just ignore it. It's a public institution. And by ignoring it, by having nothing to do with it, you are denying yourself an opportunity to influence the direction. And that is why I criticized the Communist Party and Kosatu on that ground. Thanks a lot, Raymond. Thank you. That was Professor Raymond Satna speaking to Prima Media's Polity about assessing and engaging with the GNU after 100 days. Prospect for Democratic Resurgence, part two.